Welcome to Floyd Street's Finest. I'm Jack Grossman. He's Phil Baker from ESPN, Louisville Sunday Morning Hangover, and just basically literally everything there at that radio station. I don't know about um, that. Uh, I mean, Jack of all trades, Phil Baker, the man here on Floyd Street's Finest, part of the Field 68 podcast network. And well, it's been a few days, hasn't it, Phil? As it looks like Louisville, you know, well, knock on wood here. I, you know, normally I put my phone on do not disturb when, when I record these. So you may hear a couple of things, just, you never know what could change. Right. Here. But as of about two 30 PM Eastern here on Wednesday afternoon, it does indeed look like it's going to be Pat Kelsey to be the Louisville basketball head coach. And we're going to react to it here on Floyd streets finest. So Phil, we'll go ahead and start with, with the Pat Kelsey. So we can get into like the mess of the search and all that as well, but just what are your initial thoughts on Louisville hiring College of Charleston head coach Pat Kelsey. Well, and I appreciate you having me. I always enjoy doing this. We've been texting a lot this week yes. on uh, various amounts of things. Of uh, look, I, I never claim to be source or insider guy, but some nuggets kind of fall in your lap <laughs> along the way. And, and like I always tell my buddies, like, what are you hearing? It's like I take everything with a grain of salt. Like everybody yeah. has an agenda, uh, or and th- they're trying to angle for something. So I'm always like a little standoffish or stuff, unless you see some things for your own eyes. So just we can talk about that. I know down the road of how we actually got there, but it, it's it's crazy because I, I got a really good friend who was actually in our wedding and not going into detail, but as said multiple times, like his wife's cousin uh, is back out and he's like, he's a star. He just gets it. He eats, sleeps and breathes basketball. I'm not going to fake take it and say, I've watched every Charles, the uh, college of Charleston game. Cause I haven't, but uh, it was a name that was mentioned. Uh, and we can talk about how we arrived here down yeah. and later in the pod. But um, by all accounts, seems like he's a basketball guy, eats, sleeps and breathes it, but it's always been a weird dynamic. Cause I, I never thought I, I would put him in the tier of the, hallways and the Abdul Rahim, like they would, they would be mentioned, but I didn't know how serious they would be considered. Right. He was always on, he was always on the periphery, but always, he always kind of felt like the throw in name at the end. It's like, well, you know, we got to fill this out here, make it, make it look like, you know, we're doing a full surge. So yeah, Pat Kelsey, we'll, we'll throw his name in in, in the list as well. So, yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and say like, I know a ton about him other than there's some basketball people that I, I trust that tell me this, but again, these are, I, I caution everyone and I'm not saying it can't be as bad as Kenny Payne. And I know that isn't the standard of Louisville, Ethan Moore. Uh, so calm down <laughs> there, but uh, it, it's been interesting to me just to see how we've arrived here. Uh, the heat now is on Josh Hurd. He either looks like the smartest guy in the room or you are kind of hiring this next. I know people don't want to say Scott Satterfield, so look, th- this is an interesting predicament, and then all the other tentacles of the story, the w- days and weeks leading up to this have been fascinating. I know we kind of paused a little bit because we wanted to listen to the Eric Crawford interview uh, with Bobby V on ESPN 680 because he had some newsworthy things as well that I'm sure we'll get to. Oh, absolutely. And and I'll, I'll say this. like I'm with you. I haven't watched a whole lot of College of Charleston the past couple of years. I know they were really, really good last year. They were good again this year, won the CAA again, made it back to the tournament, kind of got blasted by Alabama in the first round. But you know that was a that was a game where two teams are kind of playing the same style, and Alabama just has more talent. I think is kind of what happened there. And Alabama had a day where they were hitting shots, and not many teams beat Alabama when they hit shots. But right. but I look at it and I say, all right, well, I'll, I'll say this: I have a friend who who I work with down here in Atlanta now who went to College of Charleston. So I literally just texted him like, "Yo, what the hell do I need to know about Pat Kelsey?" And he's he's a big Philly guy, yeah, originally. So like he's he's that type of fan. He's very passionate, very fun to you know shoot the shit with in the office. And he goes goes he goes. He's a great coach. Brought our program back to life and had the best year in school history last year. Then he goes on to say he did a lot for the culture, of the community as well. I'm like, okay, that's a lot of the things that you, that that you know you're gonna need him to do at Louisville because he's entering a spot where U of L obviously. 12 and 52 the previous two years, the 13 win season with Mac and Big East the year before that. And, and also the fact that he's stepping in a spot where there's going to be a lot of pressure on him. The fan base is not exactly thrilled to say the least, though we're already starting to see kind of the turn going from absolutely pissed off to, you know, they're circling the wagons. It looks like a little bit as, as right. we speak right now, as you would expect to happen when they actually hire the coach, but you're going to have to do some things to get the fan base and the donors and all those people to buy in. 
And I would argue the thing you got to do is just one basketball game and that'll fix that. But you're going to have to use that NIL money to be able to use the portal well and build a roster that'll put you in a position to succeed. So if he can do those things at Louisville, it's very different than doing it at Charleston. That would be okay. No, it, 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 yeah. And I, I, I'm in agreement with you. And it's something that I, I, I'm in a chat with our buddy, uh, James Striebel and others. And, and it's funny because <laughs> oh, I, I knew having would, himself a day. Oh, he, he's yeah. having a field day. And, and, and I knew this would happen. I didn't realize how quickly it would happen. And a lot of these guys are friends and it's not to pick on them, but the angst of just how the search has gone. Yeah. Uh, has been if, if look we don't live in the space that is Twitter and I know everyone developing and understanding what Twitter spaces are this week uh, here at the Louisville media market's been lovely to be double D is just shining uh, yeah. on these spaces but what's been fascinating to me just from start to finish of this entire thing is how the angst has gone to Josh Hurd and this name has always kind of been I, I know people said that things have been leaked out uh, and, and and it has been sloppy there's no way around it but it feels like Kelsey was kind of always in the mix. And I'm sure it'll be spun that way. But it's been yeah. funny to see the media. I knew it would happen maybe in a week or so or after the press conference buy in. There was angst. There was anger. And then now it's kind of shifted to, oh, I'm going to support it. I love this guy. They're seeing clips of this guy. And we knew that would happen. Didn't realize yeah. how quickly it would happen. But that's I the mean, fandom we, we got to do it would happen quickly. We knew. I, I didn't know. I thought it would be the press conference. I got to I got to be honest with you. I didn't realize it would happen this quick, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast that a job like this. And I think if people see that, and I know Locke just retweeted something from Cincinnati about what his time up there and what he's meant to Northern Kentucky in the Cincinnati area, just a ball of energy and, and things like that. And look, let's be honest, when you kind of have some of these really subdued, woe is me, you know, these, this team is broken press conference, you need that little jolt of, a guy on who's like on caffeine or speed <laughs> that is going right. to try and, you know, bring back this fan base and excited after the kind of the Eeyore process you went through from Winnie the Pooh. Right. You always hire a dude that's a lot different than the, than the outgoing coach. Right. And, and in a situation like this, with how bad Kenny Pate is, you always felt like that was going to be the case. That's one of the reasons why I was really on Jerome Tank uh, back in the day. Cause you know, he had that energy and enthusiasm of back. Kelsey has some of that, some of that too, that would be very helpful at a time where Louisville basketball really, really needs that. But Jeff Goodman said something, just how the search went. Cause like Charleston lost their first round game last Friday. If he was the top guy, they could have had him hired, signed, sealed and delivered by Saturday. So like they, they very clearly, you know, they went after Scott drew, you know, they may have gone after Billy Donovan. Those two didn't work. They had the whole Dusty May fiasco where that didn't work. Josh Schertz has this MOU with, with St. Louis because he he seems to have thought that May was taking the job at Louisville, which is insane in itself. But good Jeff Goodman said some Field 68, the national pod, had just a quick 10-minute reaction on. He said something that was really interesting to me, saying, you know, Josh Hurd did not start this coaching search until he fired Kenny Payne, which is very different from how we have – Pick, we have put this through for probably four or five months at this point. Cause we've sat here saying Kenny Payton's not going to be the coach probably since the DePaul Arkansas state and Corgon Davis week back in early December. Like we, we do it from that point. And there's been and reports and most... rumors and all that stuff, right? Stuff. It, 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 it sounded like something was going to be happening after the Kentucky game. Then it didn't, but Goodman saying her stood by Kenny Payne and didn't do a lot of the back channel stuff that we see a lot of athletic directors do for better or for worse worse there and that kind of put him in a spot to where when you do finally make the move instead of having four or five months of prep work now it looks like you had this exam at, at the end of the semester and you procrastinated it for four months that's kind of what it looks like to me doesn't it the way the yeah, search is going i mean and look i i know we're on the field of 68 platform right here i, I would challenge it a little bit and again without a ton of insight but people close to it uh i, I probably said that's not necessarily true in, in the most deepest darkest moments like heard had to have known that this was heading in this direction and i maybe that's look how the right, week's gone how, how this week's gone he doesn't get that grace yeah. More people are going to lean with Jeff Goodman's of the world of how this has gone. So I, I, I grant you that argument, but it, it's been interesting to me because it's kind of been conveyed. And I know truly Donovan's of the world has put some things out there. It's like on the discord, which not on Twitter. And I don't understand like why it wouldn't be out there, but um, 
you know, that they were trying to talk with like proxies, I believe was how it was as coined of some of like, maybe that was him or Rutherford put that out there. Some of the things that they were discussing with Scott Drew proxies. So even though it, if it was formal, informal, gauging interest temperature, like I, I don't know that, but it feels like that was out there in some capacity. Yeah, it could have been a situation where Hurd kind of felt like he knew he was going to have to make the choice and that he knew what choice he was going to make, but he felt like he owed it to, Kenny, whether or not just personally or because he was a former player or, or all that stuff to where he didn't actually, maybe he knew what the move was going to be, but he didn't want to actually start the search until he could make it official when the season ended. These are all things we don't know. This is all speculation at this point. This is what makes, you know, podcasting and sports radio fun. We get to speculate on all this stuff. So, but that's kind of, you know, an interesting tidbit to this with how the coaching search has dragged on and gone. That's one of the things I could look at and say, okay, maybe there's more truth than what Goodman's saying here than what, you know, we think about all the rumors and stuff that happened back in December. Well, yeah, and you take it a step further, going back to like the Josh Shirt stuff, yeah. and I know that's been a, it feels like that was a, a decade ago, but I, I think that, that that did have a ton of meat on the boat. He just didn't think that Louisville would be in play, hence the MOU, which I'm st- I texted a a a lawyer buddy uh, and he had this to say about it, which I don't fully understand how we arrived. Here. I want to get this right. Um, asking it's like, OK, so some say they're explicitly say they're non-binding. Others say they're a full fledged contract. So that's kind of this weird predicament that has put Josh Shirts in there. But I think that he was pretty high on him. Josh heard that was uh, on Josh Shirts. So when you have that, how awkward is it going to be? And this is kind of plays into wants them to crawl here, wants them to the and maybe with the Kelsey, the ball of energy that's out there. Th- that's what you're kind of looking for is somebody like him. So that's the interesting thing with Josh Shirts to me and, and the Pat Kelsey's of the world, because I know Norlander put it out there, but I think it's tra- we're all in agreement. It's training in the direction that it's going to be Pat Kelsey. Yeah, my, my interesting thing with shirts at this point, one, you have Dusty May reportedly telling shirts that that he was going to take the Louisville job, that he ends up not taking the Louisville job. That's where shirts ends up up uh, going to St. Louis instead. Two, you look at the number at its base, 4.1 million is what, I mean, other people have said this, so I'm not breaking any news at this point. That's the rumored is, number from is, the is, is the rumored Is the rumored number is is the, is the good way of putting it. If, it. if it is, you know, around there. That's a good bit of money, but back in the day, you would think that's a number Louisville would be able to get if they were able to, you know, if that's really who they wanted. And that's where I kind of go to what Eric Crawford said with Bob Alvano earlier on Wednesday on ESPN 680, saying that Louisville may not be in the financial spot that we thought they were in. And that's something where I'm like, okay, if you can't get the $4.1 million for Josh Schertz, whether that's, you know, just not having the funds due to as, you know, say Louisville had this this uh, back during the season that, you know, Louisville's paying $48 million, $47.9 million to be exact in buyout money in the last eight years from everyone from Kenny Payne to Mac to Tom George to Papa John to you're in the ACC, you're not getting the SEC Big Ten money and TV revenue, plus the fact, you know, there were a segment of boosters and donors that were very loyal to Kenny. How much does not having Kenny impact that? You have this outside push at the last moment for Richard Patino, where you get some of those old heads from the Patino era that that maybe are in or wanted to buy back in, and then it turns out that Richard Patino isn't getting offered the job. How does that impact those people as well? To where where Louisville's in a financial spot with Josh Hurts? I know we we've kept on saying you know the NIL money is there, it's there, it's there, it's there. It's there. And on the football side, it has absolutely been there for Jeff Brom and even Scott Satterfield before that. But if you can't get the money to buy out Josh Hurts or if Josh Hurd decided Josh Hurts, as much as he liked him, wasn't worth that $4.1 million, I don't know which one it is, but either way, it's just – one of the biggest examples of what a mess this has kind of turned into. Well, well I, let me push back a little bit on – the, the financial component is definitely an issue that I know Eric Crawford alluded to that, but the, the, the Josh shirt stuff, it's different if, if you could have gotten him for nothing in essentially a couple of weeks ago versus, versus getting him for 4.1 yeah, million. Yeah. That's very, exactly. Different. And you're take and you're rolling the dice. Like as much, if you watch the NIT game against Cincinnati the other night, like it's a fun brand of basketball, but Something that was posed, I believe, in one of the many Twitter spaces that everyone stumbled upon uh, with it when it looked like it was trending in that direction. 
is it Josh Shirts is God, I gotta get better. Josh Shirts, Josh Hurt. Josh Shirts, like <laughs> this absolute star of the sport, which you know, winning depending on the metrics, you know, it's 79 to 83% of the games and, and stuff like that. Is this just a special team? Or is he a star in the making? Are you that? saying I, is it a special season or a special special coach? <laughs> precisely. So I, I understand the hesitancy of like, okay, I could have gotten him for near nothing, uh, and now I have to pay four point one, and he's not any in, in the tournament, and that's a tough sell. And I, I think we're in agreement. We think that he is going to be um, a, a really good coach at the college level. But I understand just not going like I had him for free. Now I got to pay four point one, and if you're kind right. of one A one B with Kelsey who has had tournament success, maybe he's viewing it through the prism of like, well, I can get the same guy in theory of what he's trying to do, who has a better resume, regardless of what you think Josh shirts could be. Uh, maybe it's an easier sell there. So uh, it was interesting from Crawford. And again, you've heard me talk about like shirts for a while now. I think that he is going to be a star of the sport, but I understand that being a tough self going, thinking that you didn't have to pay him to now you do have to pay. Right. 4. I, 1. I'll give you, I'll give you a comparison. So, I work for a company called Hawkeye Innovations. It, it's owned by Sony. With that, I have access to this thing called the Sony Store. And you get discounted stuff. And I just bought a PlayStation 5 because I wanted, for, for full disclosure, I literally only wanted to play the NCAA football game when it comes out this summer. <laughs> that, and, and it's only going to be a PS5, so I'm going to have to get one eventually. And I No half-back back, direct. Yeah, but... Back in November, around Black Friday, I was thinking about buying, going at, going ahead and buying it. You could get it for $360. Phenomenal deal. I decided to pass on it and wait. I ended up buying it a couple weeks ago. No, and it just came in the mail a few days ago, which is phenomenal. I haven't gotten to play it very much. I've been you know working and, and engulfed in this coaching search. But, but when I finally ordered it, it was $425. Still a pretty good deal. But it's not what what you were expecting it to be, and, and 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 it does take a little bit of the shine off it when you're having to pay more than what you were expecting. And I get it, zero dollars and four point one million is a lot different than you know three sixty and four twenty three. But that's the type of thing that you know us as normal people can rationalize as when it's not getting as good of a deal as you thought it was going to be. It does take some of the shine off it. So I don't know which side of it it ended up being, but I absolutely could see that saying Josh heard saying I like you a lot, but now. That's a lot of money for you, man. And, <laughs> it, and look, I, I think shirts, like in terms of that it's comment that I know people have picked apart now, wanted to climb here. I think Josh shirts wanted to climb here or yeah. a, a crawl here, I crawl. should say. And yeah. by the way, I I, I uh, applaud you for, I had another uh, thing about, about it, of like you not doing the relationship comparison uh, that you were trying to do to sports. That's kind of the, the crutch that yes. a lot of us do. So it's <laughs> like, so you do the, the PS5. It's like, yeah. you know, this whole fling in high school, that's kind of what no. it is with Richard Petito. So no. I applaud you for not going that route. With I, that. I wasn't going to go that route. No. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it, it, it's interesting because I think with the shirt stuff, um, the the weird couple days and and I know Bob uh you know with the threats that kind of made the the rounds and, and talking about, like I didn't think anything of it at the time but I understand why people perceived it and Bob owned it and whatnot yeah and, and but I don't think that was anything that cooled the Jets on it I, I legit think it's the MOU and Eric Crawford and I know Tim Sullivan even uh, came on and put some things out there and I think Rutherford put some things out there too it's basically saying that. Uh, it, it maybe it wasn't at the, the tier of threats, but it was probably of the scope of there was some negative feedback. Uh, and maybe so on there, it's like loser mentality. You're not built for this and stuff like that. And that played a possible role. I mean, like that's not just Bob say that out there. Crawford put that out there as well. So I, I think when you put that all in there and then what uh, helps you arrive to that is the 4.1 million for the buyout. Now that apparently with St. Louis and then uh, a guy that if you're if they're one, a one B now, and this is kind of the crop that you have, it, it's been sloppy getting here. Are you going to go with the $4.1 million buyout guy? Or are you going to go a guy where you can get nothing? If you think their ceiling is the same that, and that's the, that's probably if I had to guess where Josh heard was, who is probably scrambling uh, these last few days and trying to figure out what's going on with the dusty May stuff. That's where I would kind of think that that's how they arrived here. Yeah. Which, you know, I think they both coaches have very similar, you know, mid-major backgrounds. Um, Kelsey's obviously been in the NCAA tournament. Josh shirts. Hasn't um, shirts has you know, won a division two national title and, and uh, had a lot of success on that side of things. I mean, you can own it. I mean, the, the 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 reason we like shirts, I mean, Phil, you were the first one I saw have the take. You know, it's a very Kalen DeBoer esque resume. 
with him. You know, he's a guy that's just won wherever he's been. And Pat Kelsey, you know, has also been really, really good at Charleston. Again, my friend from work, they're very angry that he's taking the Louisville job, the Charleston side of it, from, from what I've heard. So that 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 is, from one angle, one of the things you want to see whenever you get a coach is that you want the, the school that he's leaving to not be happy that he's leaving. It's it's very far from a Scott Satterfield leaving Louisville, Louisville for Cincinnati reaction down there in Charleston. But I'll, I'll say this. Now, Kelsey, if he, you know, it does still seem like it's going to be the coach. And I have, oh boy, I have a Twitter thing. Um, not, not, nothing big, just, um, um, I tweeted the Crawford thing and now my Twitter's gone nuts. Um, <laughs> that a boy, that, that's the yeah. viral moments right there. You're learning before I'll retweet you right now from the station yeah. account and get some love for you. Oh boy. Yeah. I have, I have 20 plus um, notifications and I can't read through all these. Well, here, so so you said there, I, I, since we're doing this right now, so interesting quote from Eric Crawford on the Josh Shirts MOU situation on ESPN 680 uh, in the V Show, Bob Valvano. Louisville's not in the fin- financial place that it used to be. Eric Crawford uh, qu- uh, clarified and said, I only saw $8.5 million in my reports, but my own sources said $7 million. I only phrased that in public reporting, putting him among a handful of the highest paid coaches in the nation. So that was in response to, but they offered $8.5 million to Scott Drew, also reported by Eric. I'm confused. So Eric clarified a bunch of the stuff in there, and yes. that's what the uh, bloodbath right, that right. of your reply is. I was just making sure that I didn't like misquote him or something. <laughs> I was like, that would be bad, but um, but um, I like pretty. I heard it word for word what he said. You know that they may not. That's be why the we. Best. That's yeah. why we went on a little bit later. Yeah, 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 for sure. But looking at Kelsey, I think you know. I did this when Indiana hired Mike Woodson a couple years ago. I'll give you another comparison here. I'm not doing the relationship comparison. Don't worry. I haven't had enough relationships in my life to be able to make that comparison, Phil. Hey, <laughs> but... I, I enjoyed the, the the PlayStation 5 comparison. That's, that's, that's fresh, a, that's new, a, and innovative that, that's right much, there. That's a much more me comparison than to, than to try to use a relationship comparison. But the best month of the year is here which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 all through the NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM regardless of whether or not that bet hits. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money. This is how you make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using the bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game, and you get up to $1,500 in bonus bets, regardless of the outcome of your bet. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly, we do have some fun stuff coming for the conference tournaments and especially for the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops, odds boosts, and What I love the most, a nice parlay boost for anything you could possibly imagine betting on in the NCAA tournament from odds and getting an at-large bid to Final Four Futures to the highest seed to make to the Sweet 16. I'm calling it right now. BetMGM is the king of the prop bet for your March Madness needs. So go download the BetMGM app, use the code FIELD, and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 and our content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod, like and share the YouTube videos, tell your friends about us. It helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. So when Mike Woodson was hired at Indiana, right. I was not a fan of the hire. I I did not want Mike Woodson. I was like, why would you, you know, do the thing that at that point, you know, Louisville hadn't done it yet, but Michigan, Jawan Howard, Hubert Davis, Carolina, all those things. I didn't want the guy that had never been a college head coach before. But, and I said, you know, if he was a former player, if he won a former player, would you be hiring? Probably not. But I also sat there and said, I have sat here and hated watching this program for the last three years because I didn't think Archie Miller was the right guy for the job. Right. I just can't keep on doing that, man. So I said, I'm going to give Woodson a chance. I don't like that he's I don't like that that was the hire, but I'm not going to be able to do anything to change it. So you might as well give him a chance. And the first two years went really damn well. Year three did not. <laughs> so we'll see what happens there moving forward. But it's a much more pleasurable existence when you give the coach a chance to prove himself. Now if Woodson ends up sucking again next year, gets fired. I'll say, see, you never should have hired him in the first place. But 
it, you don't, I, I, I'm not fighting that crusade every day in a day out like I was with Archie Miller. And with this, it's kind of a similar spot. I didn't like the Kenny Payne hire. I was, like everyone else, turned pretty much against it pretty quickly at the start of last season. And we've all said here the last two years just hating watching that basketball team. Right. It hasn't been fun on any level. So, yes, Pat Kelsey was not your first choice, your second choice, your third choice, maybe even your fourth choice. It might not even have been Josh Hurd's fourth choice. It might be his fifth or sixth. But you know what? Josh Hurd's going to hire him unless he pulls a UMass like he did in 2017 where he just backed out 30 minutes before the presser. It sounds like Josh Hurd's going to hire him. He's going to be the guy. He's going to be the coach. You might as well give him a chance to see if he can actually win some games, right? I mean, yeah, it doesn't well, do and, it and, doesn't do anyone any good to just sit there and be pissed off about it, right? Well, and and, and right, and, and that's the thing that I was hopeful, and th- there was the one concern I had about the Richard Patino stuff, and I heard you on with Strebel uh, yesterday, and, and said as much. It was like, look, I, I get it. It would be great for us here at the stage, our group of folks, and they would have yeah. a ton of access. I get that. However, it, it it feels a lot like when you're constantly going back to that well, and it felt like, again, Richard Richard Patino has a much, much more better resume than Kenny Payne. Not even, Kenny Payne. It's yes. an insult to Richard to compare the two. Right, guys. so I, I'm not trying to sit here and say, like, he has done nothing to get that, but it just felt like you were trying to relive the old days. You're, you're trying to fit into that shirt that uh, you were able to fit into. Well, you've lost all this weight now, so that's probably easy for you, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you try to fit back in that stuff that doesn't, the, oh, those 32s, they don't fit you anymore. I'm at, like, a size 34 now. You know, it, it just feels like you're trying to go back to this and try to relive the good old days, and I get it. It, it would have brought back a lot of donors, and it put, and it's different. Like, it, it's different. But with this, it's not – it was the one thing I said about Kenny Payne when they were hiring. I had concerns about it, just not to dwell on that too much, but it was more emotional than it would be business or transactional. Now, kudos to Josh Hurd for, you know, cutting it off after two years. But if that's anybody else, he's probably gone after one year. Like, it's just yeah. plain and simple If after going 4-28. and 28. But uh, then you get to the Christmas break that you alluded to with uh, – was he going to be fired? Was he not going to be fired? Again, more emotional than it is business and, or transactional. So that's kind of this weird dynamic that you keep running into uh, with all of this. And, and I think with this guy, if it doesn't work, like Josh Hurd is going to be out with He's not going to be the AD here anymore. Like, it's just not. And I think he knows that. So uh, I, I have it on good authority. It's like, you know what? I not going to listen to the outside noise. And I'm sure he probably has, in fact, heard some of the outside noise. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's going to go with his gut. And I think that shirts and, and um Kelsey, Kelsey were yeah. in that mix where for a long time now it's a now it gets that weird dynamic of where they were in the pecking order but I think that's something that plays a massive role yeah and and I I agree 100 I mean what I said was treatable yesterday um which I'll just kind of say again on this platform here is that look I really like Richard Petito like I, I I don't think he's on the Scott Drew or Dusty May level per se but yeah, I think he's a good coach, and with how far things have gone, I thought, you know, bleep it. I mean, whatever. Like, he, he's fine. And from a personal level, I really would have, you know, liked it because, you know, everyone knows who the co-host of this podcast normally is. It's Mark Lieberman, who was a who was on Rick Petito's staff with Richard Petito's. We don't – I mean, of course, and he does work at the radio station as well, so of course we would want that for – for you know, right? That would be great for us. Good for us. It'll be great for us. But my thought process was, if I'm Josh Hurd, as you just said, if you're the one making that hire. This is going to make or break your career at Louisville. Why would you just listen to all the outside noise again? I mean, we just did this. I mean, it, to me, it it never felt like Josh Hurd was the one that was pushing for Richard Pitino. It was donors. It was former players. It it was fans. Josh Hurd owes it to you know. We tried it your way. It didn't work. Now let's see what we can do doing it my way. Yeah. And players, fans, yeah. like we, 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 yeah, no, and I agree. And like I said, and you just alluded to it, it would have been great, but it was funny because the circulation of uh, the guy, which uh, I feel like I need to tell you off the air, is very closer to these circles uh, who'd made the sign that was hanging over the sack uh, that I was at four. All right, so I, I haven't, like, I haven't seen the sign. Okay. Yet. So, because he was on Diener's Twitter space last yes. night. Yes. 
Okay, no, so there was a sign that was hanging over the sack. It was like, bring Richard Petito over, however he phrased it. It was the similar font as when it was saying, bring Bobby home back in 2014 oh after God. Charlie. Sh- <laughs> and, and I'm like, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. But I, but I think there is, and Dina brought up a good point. The one fascinating thing about the Richard Petino dynamic is we're operating in a new space that it would probably have moved your salary cap, dare I say, with name, image, and likeness up to a different threshold. And if we're operating on the space that you're banking on the next star of the sport to figure it out, that's an interesting dynamic to me, too. If you are like, OK, well, we're going to go up to here in this threshold of NIL money because you're not going to have this pool of donor money. And you just alluded to the things that Eric Crawford uh, said with losing some support for some high ranking officials with how the Kenny Payne stuff was handled, which we knew was probably going to be a component of this. And then trying to get some of that make up for some of that with bringing back some of the old Jurich and Patino money. I think what you're banking on with this, if you're Josh Hurd, is that, okay, they're not a fan of Kenny Payne or Patino or Jurich. They're a fan of the University of Louisville, and this guy's style of play will eventually get it. It's it's not the penny stock option right now where you're trying to say, well, actually, it probably is, where you're going to say you're banking on a guy that no one really knows or cares about, and and the style of play will eventually get those folks back in. And they'll, they'll get FOMO, dare I say, a fear of missing out of not being a part of that because they will buy in eventually. It's not going to be immediate. It's going to you're going to be Andy Dufresne and Shawshank. You're going to be going through the smut and, and the mud trying to escape. But once you get to that beach, if that's the goal with this guy and that's what Josh Hurd's banking on, then eventually you can kind of say, OK, I was right. Will you guys come work with us now? And that will be the vision that Josh Hurd is hopefully banking on. That'll get some of those KP supporters and those Patino and those Jurich supporters back then. Because if not, they're Kenny Payne supporters and they're Tom Jurich supporters and they're just Rick the Petito supporters and they're not the University of Louisville supporters. And I understand the way things went down probably didn't sit well with a lot of them. But at some point, they're going to have to take a look, long look in the mirror and it's like, eh. Either I'm a fan of the university or I'm a fan of these people as, as individuals. And that's a tough dose of reality that I think a lot of yeah. people are going to have to have. And I would say if, if they would have just hired, if they were able to close the door of Jesse May or if they got shirts or even if it was Pat Kelsey before the Richard Pitino name got up in the past couple of days, I wonder how much that changes that dynamic when there were people that thought, okay, we might be getting you know the Pitino back back in there to where once you tease him with that, then he gets taken away. Not saying Hurd was doing the teasing, but like outside influence were pushing for it and it didn't happen at that point. Is that different than if it, they would have just had Kelsey from the beginning? No, I, I agree with you. And, and how we arrived here uh, it, it is a fascinating dynamic, which I'm sure Josh Hurd will yeah. be grilled about at the introductory press conference. I mean, it's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to be, look, it's been fumbled, uh, it, optically, I think it's been fumbled. I, I think, I, man, without you know, oh, I have so I don't have so from people that would know, uh, said, man, he's kind of put his phone down to a lot of this stuff. Like he's gauged interest from some people, but it, he really is kind of at his phone down. Now it has been handled terribly for the optics because people can take it and run with it. Um, and, and that's the interesting dynamic of this is like, okay, if this is his guy, how does Kelsey feel about this? And maybe he's operating in the space is like, I'm good either way. Like I'm built for this. I'll do that. And you got to be wired a little bit differently uh, to be a division one coach. You just do. Yeah. And that's where it's going to be the next step of this chapter of this book of where you're trying to figure out, did he get the right guy? Did he not? Is Josh heard the right guy? Is he not? that's going to be the interesting uh, story that I think is going to come away from the press conference. So the the one thing that Diener said, I think it was Sunday or Monday on one of his Twitter spaces that I thought was a great quote. I'm going to give him, you know, the credit for coming up with it is you're not trying to win the summer. You got to win the winter. It's not about winning the summer. It's about winning the winter. And it might be, it's going to be a rough summer for, for Josh Hurd and, and for, you know, Pat Kelsey. But if you end up winning some games this year, this upcoming season, then that this all becomes a distant memory if this hire works out and he ends up being successful. That's a big if. We don't know if that's going to happen. And it's definitely a tough spot that Pat Kelsey's going to enter in. And he's not the type of star that a Scott Drew or even a Dusty May would have been. But at the end of the but you day, gotta, you got to sorry had, to interrupt. You have to yeah. roll the dice on these guys yeah. eventually. And I know people said they did that last time with Kenny Payne. But in order to become a new star of the sport, you got to do this. And this is... A, when you got that dose of reality and the cold water splashed in your face from for the bucket of Billy Donovan's not coming here. 
Scott Drew's not coming here. I understand the Dusty May stuff doesn't sit well, but if some of the things that have come out from that, that Bob even said prior to this, and even I know guys like Rutherford put it out there that he had reservations of just kind of like being the it guy, that causes concern. If this guy's running toward the fire, and I think Shirts would have done that, and I think Kelsey kind of feels wired that way too, but yeah. some of the texts I've gotten from the, then, you know, that's maybe what Josh Hurd's, that, that's what he's gravitating towards. So I, I think it, you just kind of have to sit through this bleep sandwich for the next seven months. Yep. And then I'm talking whoever they're scheduled, uh, you know, for these exhibition games, like you got to blow up out of the water and then you'll get some excitement. You get away from the Yum Center for a little bit because the lower bowl is not going to be filled because he's not a big name, whatever. You go to the battle for Atlantis and people could buy in if you're building towards something and you see something sustainable that it's like, OK, I see his vision now. That was the problem with the last go red. You didn't see this. Now I understand the people tell me the Chris Mack tree uh, with everything that transpired. I get it. I, I understand. But it's it's been conveyed to me by some folks that it's like, no, he's his own guy. He's evolved since he's been there. Um, so again, I'm not going to sit here and say I've gotten, which is good. That's awesome. something yeah, worth it, bringing up because I know the name Mac and Gaudio aren't exactly revered in the city of Louisville at this point. Well, yes. Mac Kelsey is from technically from that coaching tree, but if he has indeed distanced himself from those two enough to where, yes, he learned stuff from him, but he's his own guy. That's something that I think will be reassuring to a lot of Louisville fans on that front. Let me ask you this, Phil. Yes. Again, Phil Baker, ESPN, Louisville, Floyd Street's finest here, a part of the Field 68 Podcast Network. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff on you know YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever the heck you're listening to this podcast here. What will be the expectations for Pat Kelsey in year one with Louisville in Man. order to please and try to, you know, get the fan base to buy in on him. I think if look, people are going to be clamoring even more so now for the tournament. Uh, I mean, look, the guys won what four out of five conference tournaments. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be flirting around there, especially I go back to this treasure chest of name, image, and likeness that it, I, I've been told by everybody that they apparently have. Now I'm curious to see what that's like after this. And if that goes up or down, or if they're the 502 circles working harder, but all I've been told from all these people that apparently are in the know is that there is a treasure chest of NIL. And if that's where we are in this day and age, and if this guy's a ball of energy, I, I think you're going to see this guy. And this is one of the reasons why Josh heard probably, went this route. I don't want to say it's like somebody that you can manage a little bit better and say like, you're going to bring back the Cardinal caravan. You're going to have open practices. You're going to meet with donors. You're going to do X, Y, and Z. And you're going to go to the Jeff Brom fish fries. Exactly. Things like that. And be out and about in the community and hopefully win people over. I think that people will buy in. I think you just need to be flirting with one of those first four team out of the tournament with a uh, schedule that I mean, look, the ACC, I know now is taking a victory lap and you'll sit here and say it's like, oh, it's the, the conference hasn't been good. But with what it's been in the last few years, I think people will be trying to you got to be flirting with the tournament. You got to be the, the receiving votes in the top 25, depending on what they do with the roster, because so, take it a step further. I'm getting texts. It's like, oh, is there anybody on this roster? And I'm kind of like, guys, like no disrespect to them, but like they are coming off a four win team and an eight win team. Yeah. If Pat Kelsey comes in and thinks like, I don't want that, that losing mentality or those energy vampires, which I know is my bingo card word from the, the, the first, then so be it, bring in his own guys and start over, you know? So that's something that and it's no dis dispersion of them. By all accounts, it seems like they're good kids. They just weren't coached well uh, right. and were confused on a lot of things. I, I think if he wants to bring in his guys flirting with the top 25 and maybe being one of those first four or next four outs uh, would get people there with year number two saying like, no, with this treasure chest money, you need to be in the tournament there. It's with the resources here. You got to be one of the 68 teams in the tournament. I, I'll say this, first of all, like as far as the portal stuff goes, I said this with Greer last week, but, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, there were two thoughts I had on, on the Louisville players in the portal as there's seven of them now, I believe. Number one was the thought you just had was you went 12 and 52 with these guys the last two years it, it, is it really the edge of the world? But the, my number two thought is, look, and I'm going to compare it to Mike Woodson in Indiana again. When he took the job, there were six Indiana players in the portal and Trace Jackson Davis had declared for the NBA draft. And everyone said, had the same big picture questions of everything's falling apart. What the heck is the roster going to look like? Woodson got Jackson Davis to come back from the draft for not one, but, but for two years. And all six of those guys in the portal came back. 
Not saying that Pat Kelsey is going to do exactly that because, again, you got to figure out which one, which players he wants, who he doesn't want, all that stuff. But just because they're in the portal doesn't mean they can't come back still. That there, There's still that possibility open. We'll see what ends up happening there. Number two, you're going to have to be able to use the portal either to replace those guys, to supplement those guys, whatever, because they, they were 8-24 eight and, eight and 24 last year. The roster is going to have to get better. There were some pieces there that you liked, but the roster is going to have to get better. And as far as the expectations go, it's a little unfair to say that before we know what the roster is going to look like, but damn it, that's how this works with, with podcasting and radio. But I think it, here's the spot he's getting into. Even though he's in year one, it's new for him. Louisville fans are going, I, I've been saying this for months, but but it becomes even more of a case of how much of a mess it's been. Louisville fans are not going to be patient, nor should they be patient. Because they've sat through a pile of shit the last decade. On hey, various you, I feel like I'm on a Twitter space with Diener. Yeah. How about that? I like it. <laughs> yeah, th- I, I try to keep it PG most of the time. But, I mean, that, that that's the best way to describe it, right? What Louisville basketball was off the court with all the scandals and, and now on the court the past two, three years. That's what it's been. And, and Louisville fans want to win. They want to win now. Now I've heard people say, you know, they better be in the second weekend or stuff like that. You know, do the Jerome Dang thing. I'm like, that would obviously be spectacular. We'll see what type of roster you put together, but I don't know if that should be your baseline expectation for year one. Right. One. Uh, but I think the absolute goal should be make the tournament. You haven't been in the field since 2019. Be one of those 68 teams that's called. But if you have a year where you're a couple games over 500, you're in the NIT. I think it's not where Louisville wants to be as a program by any means, but at least at some point, again, flirting with the bubble in some way, shape, or form. Mormon, even if it's, you know, being 19 and 15 and in the NIT, I think that's a year where people can say, okay, it's not where we want to be long term, but you're laying a foundation. You're putting yourself in a much better spot to be where, where yes, you can vault yourself up. I think that's the bare minimum of what they would have to do. Obviously, well, though, I think the clear goal is going to be NCAA tournament or bust. Well, and it's funny, as you were uh, going on the goals and everything, I got something in the inbox uh, from good old Zach Greenwell, uh, the Louisville SID, saying, media advisory president Kim Chancel. Is that her last name? That, that's good that we don't know the president's yeah. name. I know everyone's <laughs> freaking shouldn't. out tagging her on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and the athletic director Josh Hurd scheduled to meet with the media on Thursday, March 28th at 3 p.m. at the practice facility for a change, switching up the juju a little bit. Not gonna, yep. oh, no, no the Yum Center, Center there. Yeah, do yep. it at the Kieber Center or, or Rick Bozich's uh, tweet uh, out of the, all the, the chairs that were set up inside the KFC Yum Center, but they're going to meet at 3 o'clock uh, to in conference related to the leadership of the Louisville men's basketball program on Thursday, March 28th at three o'clock. Take that Diener, Diener, not 1001 Strebel and Mark Ennis are getting that. So, uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of where we are now. And, and look, I mean, I, I know people say you don't got to win the press conference and things like that with this one in the ball of energy stuff I've seen on Twitter and some of the clips and everything. I think he will win some people over and we're already starting to see it from basketball. People say yeah. it's a great hire, but I will caution people. This was the very thing that we heard about, you know, Seth Greenberg, Goodman of the world saying like, you know, Kenny Payne feels like the right fit for where Louisville is right now. And there were some people out there is like, this is going to be an, a, an absolute disaster, but you kind of rely on that uh, for some of their opinions to do that. So I, I, I warn people for people that I trust that are basketball bennies, as I say, be cautiously optimistic with this just because he's not at a power five and things like that. Ceiling Dan Hurley, Nate Oates, you know, if it yeah. didn't work out after that, like after a few years, then, you know, you, you whiffed on this and you're probably looking for a new athletic director. So, the, you know, the people freaking out about this, like I, I see some of our friends saying, oh, we're I, I got to find a, a, a new team. I'm like, OK, like, I mean, what Phil, other I've, options I've had? Have? I've had one friend who cannot currently drink because of some health issues that was pouring bourbon and, and drinking bourbon on, on Saturday night after the Dusty May stuff. I have another friend saying he was going to jump off the Sherman Bin Bridge. <laughs> I mean, we have we have hit every level of. Craziness, I think, is the right word here right. Th- throughout this coaching search. I've had friends cry on the phone with me this week. It- it's been cry on the phone, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It- it- I'm not joking. It's it's been it's been insane. It has been an insane week here ever since Dusty May on Saturday. It's reached levels that I've never thought it was going to be. Like, guys, at some point, I get it. I grew up in Louisville. I went to all the games. 
And I've been around Louisville fans, Kentucky fans, Indiana fans are going to school up there. So I know crazy when I see it. This is basketball, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but that but i go back to this but, it's like yeah. you can't th- this is when you know when, when but that's what makes that's what makes the exactly. fan base in the area so great though that's that what's the difference between this, this and pepperdine yes. you know like this is what makes it the thing you know the bermuda triangles billy reed rest the soul used to write about it so with louisville kentucky and indiana and even some of the other schools in the region so uh look i mean that's what it's gonna say i got some other text messages uh some good stories little tidbits uh that i'll have to share with you and that's for maybe we'll put this behind a paywall and then you and i can get <laughs> compensated for the stuff that we hear and all the little things that are thrown at the wall that we've heard over the years. And it's like, huh, how about this? But boy, yeah. this week could have, you talked about it, this could have a 30 for 30 for itself. And that's saying something about everything that transpired at the university of Louisville. I mean, at the end of this, like, like we keep saying, you know, when this is all over the 30 for 30 is going to be nuts. Like, how do you make a 30 for 30 out of the last, last 10, 15 years of Louisville basketball? I mean, oh, it's it, going to be like the OJ series where it's a yeah. five parter. I mean, it's it's crazy. You know, during COVID, uh, we I, I, we've talked about this that uh, we reached out some of our partners, being an ESPN affiliate, about hey, like what do we got to do to try and get to like you know some ideas going? And I was like, maybe not a, a you know video thing because that's not really our space uh, here with the audio medium. But I was like, what about one of these thirty for thirty pods? And God made some headway on some of those things but it's like oh it feels like you got some there i'm like yeah we need to revisit that again because yeah. the moment is somebody who helped out with the red v blue documentary which was a decade plus ago i mean you could do four four or five more documentaries just since that was when cal and patina were back-to-back champs and, and, and in 2020 12 and in 2013 it's so much has transpired since then uh it's been a zoo but look i mean pat kelsey looks like it's trending toward he is going to be the men's basketball coach press conference coming up thursday three o'clock uh we'll air it on espn Louisville, and i'm sure the floyd street's finest will have a uh, full reaction to that as well yeah we'll have to do a third pot this week <laughs> yeah, which that's the game though that's what makes it fun so we'll have to figure something i'll have to figure something out on that front for sure but you know what that actually yeah, that's the thing though pat kelsey brings them back to relevancy that kind of me would be a clear ending point even if they're not in final four championships but just back to like tournament team every year because like i i sit there and wonder like how do you do a 30 for 30 like, like they like they did the roll tide war eagle one the alabama auburn one and they did that right after you know bama won the title and auburn won the title and they needed to wait probably about a decade for it because you know you had the kick six and you had you know hell the game this year was 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 insane and at at what point do you feel like okay we have all the information that we need to thoroughly sit through and do 8 hours of this <laughs> Because yeah, it's I mean, nuts. It, it's so funny. The text messages just you and I have had over the last week, and I'm sure your phone's been blowing up. I mean, today I I, I have 68 messages I haven't even responded to. And I'm not even like I can only imagine like what guys like Diener and some of these other guys have been getting from their Twitter spaces and just people wanting to be on the note. But uh, I, I will say 72 ish hours ago, I would have bet a lot of money that it was going to be Josh shirts and um and then that's just how quickly these things move. Um, and maybe, you know, another interesting nugget that Diener put out this morning that not Dusty May because he's repped by clutch, but it was uh, Scott Drew, Josh Shirts, and Richard Patino. It was his understanding were all repped by the same agent. And that threw another that threw another wrinkle in there too <laughs> that Diener uh, kind of put out there. And I was like, huh. So um, you know, that's how I think Richard Patino entered the chat because it was like he wasn't like I, I think if I had to put myself in the agent shoes, he didn't perceive this as a real opportunity at all for him to even be considered with everything that's transpired here. So that was an interesting dynamic of that. And then it's like, you know, negotiating with somebody like Scott Drew's agent is a different caliber than somebody, a guy that's in the NIT right now. And the, but they know how much money you are willing to spend for somebody again, different resume, different parts of their career. But again, knowing if that is in fact the same agent, that's an interesting dynamic. If you go back to him, it's like, oh, what about this guy? And after dealing with clutch sports and what happened with Dusty May, I mean, Dusty May, quite frankly, cost Josh shirts the job. It feels like, yeah. Oh, it absolutely seems like it is. Like, I, like I wonder how that relationship is impacted by that because it sounds like, again, if all these rumors are true that have been swirling around, Dusty May told Josh shirts he was taking the Louisville job. If Dusty May does not tell Josh shirts that he does not take the MOU at St. Louis. If 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 Josh Shirts does not take the MOU at St. Louis, 
Josh Hurd can hire him without that extra $4.1 million when Dusty May spurns Louisville for Michigan. And from everything we seem to, to have uh, gathered here, Josh Hurd's was Josh Hurd's number one target. That that after after obviously like Scott Drew and Billy Donovan and those guys. yeah because and, and a lot of our listeners have been upset it's like you know this has been a disaster this is a coaching search I understand it's been sloppy but in terms of these prearranged marriages that we've talked about in the past and make no mistake about them that's not me defending Josh Hurd at all but this this is what come with this is what comes with coaching searches from time to time not everything is like the Alabamas of the world with it, Kellen DeBoer. It, it, it happens quickly. It's been sloppy. I agree with you, uh, you know, everybody that's out there with that. But this is the, the things that come with coaching searches, though. It, it can get sloppy. There are leaks. Um, there, there are things that happen along the way, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast. It's um, it's usually not this public, though. Like, I feel oh, like I, it, look, it, it, has, it hasn't – I don't I, – I can't remember a coaching search that's been this public and this sloppy, to be completely honest, since probably Tennessee and Chiano. Like that's I'll grant you it's been sloppy, but yeah. when you're gauging the interest and you're swimming in the waters that Louisville is, and there's interesting dynamics of, you know, I mean, obviously the former coach that's was suing the school's son wanting to return here. Right. That's a tentacle <laughs> of it. A guy that's playing in the NIT championship still, <laughs> but going back to your point, then Pat Kelsey, like should have been hired. If that was your guy, which leads me to believe that it shirts was in fact herds guy until the MOU was out there. Then he would have hired Pat Kelsey over the weekend. Right, Unless because he didn't think he could get around the MOU. This, I mean, West Virginia has been filled. Stanford's been filled. Vanderbilt's been filled. Washington's been filled. Michigan's been filled. Ohio State's been filled. You can say this is a coaching search all you want, Phil. But but the point being is this is the absolute last job that of any meaningful you know notice unless you know Kentucky were to double down and fire Calipari after Barnhart said they were going to bring him back a couple nights ago. So that's not happening. This is, this is the last job that's out there. Everyone else has already gotten their guy. Yeah. Louisville still, you know, are finally is finally getting that. It seems like with, with, with Pat Kelsey, but it's taken them a lot longer than everyone else. It no, has. It, it, and, and I agree and, with and, you. And, and especially in this new era where the transfer portal has been open for about 10 days at this point, and that and that window closes on May first. You're losing time. You're losing precious time to get a staff together and to start contacting dudes and to get yourself ready for next season to have that product for a pressure cooker of a job. It already is with with gas gasoline poured on top of the flames for Pat Kelsey now with how this search has gone and how pissed off the fans are. No matter how many of them buy back in, there's a lot of pressure on him and he's starting behind the eight ball because this has dragged on for probably about a week longer than it should have. And, I, and I'll, I'll grant you that. And the one last thing on the shirt stuff, and I promise I'll let it go. But the thing that's other, it's also fascinating to me with the St. Louis component, if by all accounts he really wanted to come here and St. Louis was like, no, I'm not letting you out of your MOU, how is that relationship getting started? Yeah. Off that, because another thing is like, OK, well, maybe U of L should have just paid that, which, again, we pointed out earlier in the podcast that that wasn't an, going to be a fiscally responsible option. Um, that's interesting to me to the, the relationship with the administration with Josh shirts, if the MOU was signed, which I still, I need like Billy Madison need to sit in kindergarten and explain to me, is it a legal binding contract is a non-bonding, uh, for that. But that's fascinating to me what that relationship could be off, uh, be like in terms of getting off to the wrong foot from the get go. So, uh, that's another capacity, yeah, but that that's their problem down I 64 about uh, four and a half hours away. That's not Louisville's because, uh, looks like Pat Kelsey is going to be the coach. Yes, it does. And we will see what happens next for sure. Going to be a very busy and quick moving things. I think it, it, assuming Pat Kelsey does indeed, you know, actually attend the press conference and, 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 and accept the job and all that stuff. You, you got to say it with, you know, one, it being Louisville and two, you know, him having that history with, with UMass. He just, it has to be said, but we'll see what ends up happening now moving forward. You I need an Alan Cutler situation of somebody chasing him out of the keyboard center. if he decides to do that, <laughs> we got Kent Taylor behind the car when he uh, bombarded uh good old Josh heard last week. I need an Alan Cutler, Billy Gillespie yep. thing. And then my life will be complete. <laughs> Well, he's Phil Baker. I'm Jack Grossman. Phil, really appreciate the time. We'll have more on Pat Kelsey. Uh, um, I guess, you know, being introduced tomorrow, uh, Thursday at 3 p.m. here um, on Floyd Street's Finest. We'll have more reaction to that as well. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time here on Floyd.